Vaccines, one of the most divisive topics in recent years. And because of this pandemic, a topic which has made us ask ourselves, who gets access to this life-saving technology? Although we know that vaccines can be developed in record time, their delivery poses a whole new logistical challenge. Already, we're on track to miss the WHO's target to have every country vaccinate at least 40% of its population against COVID by the end of this year. One of the reasons this is happening is because once a safe vaccine is developed, it undergoes a lengthy journey from mass production in manufacturing facilities to storage and centralized depots before it's finally delivered to individual communities. And for COVID vaccines, all of these steps have to occur between refrigeration to ultra low freezer temperatures. Some have compared this to transporting a cool glass of water through the desert without ever letting it warm up or freeze. And for this reason, distribution in low income countries becomes difficult or impossible, where average temperatures are often between 20 to 35 degrees Celsius. More equitable vaccines can be created through the use of phages or bacterial viruses, the natural predators of bacteria. They are actually the most abundant biological entities on this planet and occupy nearly every ecological niche, including the human body. Phages can be designed to deliver a pathogen's protein or genetic material to immune cells in order to stimulate the production of antibodies without ever infecting human cells. And that's exactly what I'm currently testing in a COVID-19 disease model using a novel phage that I've isolated. This technology can also be very quickly adapted to other types of pathogens, either known or newly emerging. But what makes it especially unique is that these formulations can be freeze-dried, eliminating the need for refrigeration and further reducing the energy input requirements during transportation. In addition, they can be manufactured in a matter of hours at a fraction of the cost of mRNA or viral vector vaccines with the added flexibility to be administered orally or intranasally. More doses can be produced and delivered in more places around the world. If we use phage-based vaccines, all people can have access to this life-saving technology. Thank you. Oh, just talk. Um, so this seems like a, a pretty revolutionary thing. There's a lot of money going into COVID and vaccinations in general right now. What, what's been the barrier for this to not be here today? Uh, yeah, so phages are a pretty new technology. Um, just in 2020, the FDA, for the first time ever, approved a phage therapy to treat uh, bacterial infections. So there has been no uh, regulatory approval for phage-based vaccines yet. Right now, it's regulated as a drug. However, I would argue it doesn't behave like a drug. It kind of needs its own category. So we're still trying to figure out how to push this forward into the clinical phase. So we have a lot of data at the preclinical level, but getting this to the next step is, is the biggest challenge. <laughs>